Hi, friends. Uh, it is a <clears throat> rainy and cold and lazy day today in Berkeley, and I have updates about the Mac One or the Mac One, the M1 Mac Mini or the M1 Mini server. Uh, I see I have somebody new. I, I saw that I actually have two new um, followers uh, that came in from, uh, looks like one from one of my toots on Mastodon. And uh, I see, I do see Cody um, and Alistra, Elisidra. Um, let's, let's take a quick peruse on, on, uh, on the, uh, on the Mastodon. I'm moving very slowly today. So, uh, but please bear with me. We will get into some, uh, very interesting stuff in one moment. I just want to know who I'm, who's in chat since, uh, this is actually like a pregnant. Oh yeah. We've, uh, I think we've exchanged, um, Oh, you boosted my thing. Thank you so much. Uh, luckily, I have uh, everything being a little sleepy today. Luckily, I have software that I use to cut out the um, uh, all of my all of my like pauses and like really, you know, I I I've it's it's really amazing. This will be uh, my third live stream on a pretty on a regular ish schedule about two weeks and. Um, I found this really amazing software called Recut, and it cuts out all of the dead air from your videos and just spits out like an XML file that you can throw into um, Final Cut or Resolve or Premiere, and uh, and then you can actually like tweak all your edits and stuff or cut stuff. You know, it ge it gives you like a good starting point for like cutting down live stream vods. And uh, it's been amazing to, to work with. I don't have a license yet. I'm still working on the free, which is, um, I think you get five or six ex exports. So I have like two left before I have to drop 80 bucks on the, on the software, but it's totally worth it. It cuts out, it cuts like two, two and a half hour streams down to one hour VODs, like, like instantly. Um, I know not much is going to be happening out over here, although I did want to show you the hard drives. I know I've mentioned my hard drives that I've been using a lot lately. It's, it's these um, Western Digital drives. Uh, I actually have three of them. The other one's actually directly connected, and these two are connected over a hub right now. But I'm going to try to get, to get all three on the hub. And then um, I think the only other I.O. device that we're going to be using um, at all is... Um, this boy, it's a Coral TPU. Uh, hopefully later, if, if if I have the energy uh, to to really like get into it, write some YAML uh, and try to get uh, try to get it running in Docker on my VM. Uh, this is going to be this is going to kind of like offload some of the some of the um, some of the yeah. It's it was it actually took almost. Oh gosh, I ordered it in November of last year and I didn't get it until July, I believe. What is that smell? I'm smelling something that's... Sorry, y'all. Yeah, so it took quite a while. Luckily, I only had to pay retail for it, but we're going to use... Uh, yeah, they're they're super expensive if you can't get them for retail. Uh, but if you wait six, six to eight months, you might get one. Uh, I ordered it from Seed. Uh, yeah, this time last year, and uh, it came in like July. So uh, that's gonna help with uh, Frigate to um, with like machine learning. It'll offload machine learning for for Frigate to do detection stuff. And eventually, I want it to. Um, I want to kind of extend Frigate and see if I can get something like see if I can get it to like focus on like the cheese car for like the the. Um, the ticket, like the, the, the parking cop cheese car. And, um, you know, it, it'd be cool if I, I could get it to like recognize, um, like cop uniforms, like people in cop uniforms. Uh, cause I have, uh, actually I'll pull it up right now. Um, let's see, do I want to do, yeah, might as well do this and bring you up. Uh, you'll notice I have these cameras here. Um, and these are all of my external cameras. 
Yeah, they're they're a little expensive. Uh, she has. Oh, they have them in stock. Wow, that's really impressive. I'm I'm yeah. No, I'm really impressed. I I was I was looking at like I was checking all of the sources, and then eventually, me and a friend decided to like pull the trigger on a back order uh, right around the same time, and we got them right around the same time too. Yeah, I don't really have the option for for the M.2 version. Um, it would be nice, uh, but I'm I'm running a Mac Mini and I have like zero internal expansion potential, so uh, everything has to run on USB. And that was kind of the way uh, it was when I was running uh, this boy too. So uh, this was this is what I'm replacing with um, the Mac Mini. I just had the Mac Mini, so the story behind the Mac Mini was um, I needed something low power and powerful to kind of help with editing and stuff. Um, so when I got my bus, and the plan has always been to like DC power it and like bypass the AC, uh, the AC, the internal AC uh, power supply. Uh, but, you know, I used it for a week and then I'm ADHD and like stopped sitting at my desk, right? So like <laughs> it, uh, it just like, I ended up getting like a MacBook Air and then I realized the MacBook Air wasn't going to work for what I needed, so I ended up getting a MacBook Pro, 14-inch M1 Pro, and this thing has been sweet. This thing has been super amazing, and um, yeah, so I was going to sell the Mac Mini when I when I sold the Air, or I'm still I'm still trying to sell the Air. Fucking, it, it's a it's a buyer's market right now for for old Macs, um, and like I'm like my M1. My M1 MacBook Air has not held its uh, value like like older Macs would have, or, or what I remember. Like I I skipped the whole I kind of skipped the whole unibody, uh, just the just USB C ports uh, era of of MacBooks. And uh, but last time my Mac, last MacBook Pro was the um, the last one with like full of ports, so. Um, and I sold that for almost as much, probably like 75% of what I paid for it, if not, if not more. And, um, after like five years, it was nuts. And this, I can barely get like 50, 60% after like a year. So anyways, so yeah, I'd love to, um, get some machine vision on these cameras, which are external, uh, to my house and like, let me know if it's seen the, like, the the parking cop or cops in general. I think I'm just going to start with, like, you know, Frigate has its own basics, like, if it sees a car or a person, and then I can kind of filter through that and then focus on uh, what I need in the future. Uh, I have my stream URLs right here. Uh, this, actually, I've, I've been playing around with, with Home Assistant lately uh, and uh, really been, like, since I got on Adderall and I'm like focusing, I've actually been like cleaning up my home assistant, like and just organizing it and making it really nice and actually making uh, customized like interfaces. So um, this is, you know, the, here's my um, my estrogen shot and it counts up per day. But normally it would just have like an on and off button. Uh, and then I was able to template uh, the other. Um, the other uh, entity in into the button and uh, when I click it uh, on like the third day it'll turn on and it'll be like hey take your so shot bitch and then um, and uh, <laughs> yeah no it's been chaotic for forever uh, I've just been super focused on getting hardware into my bus and um, I've been doing a lot of ESP home and custom PCB uh, designing uh, for ESP homes for everything to run on uh, the low voltage systems in my bus and make sure that like if I'm without internet, like everything still works. Um, so, you know, I got my solar here. This this got cleaned up from, from what I had it before. Uh, this Zigbee plug, this is the Mac mini that we're gonna be talking about. Uh, you might notice, I, I also got it up in the corner above me too. That'll stay there uh, and we can kind of keep an eye on on what she's doing when we're working with her. Um, but I think the last 
the last um, value I saw was about 14 watts. Um, but I ran some software last night that actually pushed her pretty hard up to, I saw 40 watts. I, I literally saw 40 watts out of her, like right up here. Uh, this is like 20, 22 watts right here. And um, yeah, is it 20, 22 watts? Cause it's, uh, I don't know. It's, it's, it's weird. Um, this this whole this whole graph chart is weird. I've just been trying to track uh, power consumption on the Mac Mini, and this the 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 Zigbee plugs that I have uh, that do uh, power monitoring are just not the greatest. So um, yeah, and 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 in doing so, in in setting up uh, my home assistant, I actually got um, I kind of I think I kind of started this when. Uh, I finally got my R stack um, taken care of, and I literally have now. I have this library tab over here, and then I can uh, open up movies, uh, radar, sonar, lidar, radar, wispar, prowlar, and what is overseer? Overseer doesn't actually work in this uh, browser window. Uh, so what I actually did was I made. Uh, this kind of like dashboard for the library, like the entry point into like all the library tabs uh, has all this data that comes from like so, all, like integrations with the R's and also Plex. So I've, I've templated like how many movies I have out of like the movies that I want to get. So like in, in I, I have a tendency to kind of... Um, balance the bandwidth that I have, uh, being wireless over LTE. Um, I don't, when I put something in, yeah, yeah. You can just open the tabs in HA as long as, as long as you're local, uh, everything's fine. When you, the, the, I did run into an issue when I had, uh, Nabucasa. Um, it, it won't, you know, when you're in Nabucasa, you have an S, uh, you have a, it's a SSL connection, so it can't, uh, open non SSL uh, URLs within itself. Uh, so you'd have to like, you'd have to figure out how to do certificates and stuff. But one of one of the things that I did uh, over the past couple weeks is I actually got rid of Nabucasa and switched to Tailscale. And I'm also going to play with uh, Zero Tier, which are like NAT traversing VPN. So like, they understand a specific network, right? So like I run the app on my laptop, I run the app on Home Assistant, I run the app on the Mac Mini, I run the app on my phone, right? And when I it when it's running on any of those devices, um, they can always phone to each other, uh, no matter what NAT traversal, traversal is necessary, especially considering that I'm on CG NAT, uh, which is super difficult to punch through. Nabucasa seemed to be okay with it, but um, uh, you know, it, it'd be almost impossible for me to set up my own like wire guard, right? And uh, try to punch through, uh, you know, a public IP through to uh, a natted IP through to another natted IP through to my own like my own NATs. Uh, so yeah, I can I can open up radar and sonar and I don't immediately like tell it to go download everything. I just kind of like keep everything in there. And then when I'm ready or I'm like, Hey, I need something. I'll go into radar or sonar or LIDAR and like grab it. Right. I'll, I'll, I'll do a manual search usually and, and find the, uh, the, the content that I want. And then, and then I just have like a little, uh, thing for transmission. And, uh, what I did with, Overseer is I made it open up in uh, another tab from here. So transmission does the same thing as well. Um, yeah, yeah, it's uh, so like I the yeah the adding the tabs uh, was super easy as long as you don't have like any like login too. So SSH and login will fuck everything up. But uh, other than that, it's super great. Um, I have to get, I, I want to redo my flood instance anyways, and like make it so it doesn't require a login. Um, in fact, I'm, I'm really hoping at some point to 
um, build it into transmission and maybe make my own variant <laughs> uh, with of transmission with flood like a not like not just like a docker or anything like a native like a native build of of transmission with flood instead of its own um its own thing because i can actually double click this and get transmissions uh original ui like web ui at least uh and i'm i'm just running the um the cli version on the mac mini so um yeah, that's that's pretty much that in terms of I, I guess that's what I can show you uh, from my from my list of software. Here's my entire software stack for for the Mac Mini right here. Uh, hopefully, there's there shouldn't be too much in here that's like a security issue. Um, I think there's one in here, but it's it's really not a big deal. It's just my it's just my um, my dashy config backup, um, which I might not, not even use anyways. So um, let's go over to the Mac, the the Mac Mini. Um, I don't want to do that. Um, okay, so you're gonna stay there for a second. I'm gonna bring my notes over. Actually, I'm gonna bring my. So let's kind of go over how everything's kind of laid out. Um, because uh, sorry for the the. Um, jittery screen i think it's um <clears throat> i think it's um some weird shit with with obs um so the main thing that i found out is that um i can't run uh and right now i'm just uh i'm just vnc'd into the mac mini um where the fuck is my mouse uh i'm just vnc'd into the mac mini uh and uh i have I usually run this headless. I still have it connected to my monitor here, uh, just in case I need to. Um, actually, that's that's a that's probably a good place to start. Honestly, is that if you want to run a Mac Mini or any Mac headless, you have to not encrypt the boot drive. Uh, you cannot use. You have to make sure that. Um, let's see here, security and privacy file vault has to be turned off. You can you can encrypt the rest of your drives, um, and I do. I actually have a couple of them. I actually, have my one of one of my drives encrypted, and I might just encrypt all of them uh, and set them all as APFS encrypted drives. So, um, and then just make sure that I'm not keeping anything. Like if it's a super security risk, just make sure that I'm not keeping anything um, sensitive on the internal drive. And just use that internal drive as there's only 256 gigabytes on there anyways. So like it's just it it, it it's really swap space ultimately. Like I have I have my downloads folder on there. Um, I think just like you know settings end up going in there. Backup files from the R's originate there, and then I get and then I have automations to to duplicate them onto my external drives. And um, you you can actually see I'm 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 downloading I'm doing a Google takeout right now and and getting some of my uh, data off of the internet uh, and onto here. Uh, but yeah, so if you want to run completely headless, you have to um, you it won't allow VNC connection or screen share connections at the login um, if you have File Vault on. And um, I think it's, you know, I think that's more important to me being able to like run through a, a boot loop or a restart or a power loss or, or something um, and be able to log in real quick and allow it to uh, boot up all my applications and, um, and all that jazz. So, um, and let's just dive straight into um, applications because, uh, here is my startup and not all of this as much of this as possible i've tried to keep open source but not all of it is and uh resilio is one of those that is not not open source um but i i personally absolutely love it as a dropbox replacement uh and it's really interesting to use for um backups as well 
because it has a system to kind of hide deleted files for you for like 30 days. So if you like delete something, it'll keep it in what it calls like the archive folder. So it's not it's not staged backups, right? It's not it's not uh, you know doing incremental backup stuff. It's really more of a sync program. Um, so for for example, um, do and Backblaze right there is definitely one of the um, <clears throat> one of the um, let's just do really big icons. It uh, Backblaze is part of my three two one backup um, process as well. So um, I have my local backup. So I have these two uh, five terabyte drives right here, uh, Moto Mac 01 and Moto Mini 02. Uh, they should be Moto Mini 01 and 02. I just started, I didn't fully <laughs> name name this uh, until I got, got uh, into it. So Moto Mini is now the name. Uh, Mato is uh, kind of my own shortening of Mato Pacos, uh, which comes from Negro Mato Pacos, which is a Chilean protest dog uh, who like to fuck with cops. So um, I named my server Mato and uh, in, in memoriam of, of protest dog. And uh, I, I think at some point I actually want to get a tattoo of of Matapacos. There's a really nice illustration of him uh, by um, by an artist that uh, I just I just really like that illustration. I want to get it tattooed. Anyways, not all of this stuff gets backed up. So like my my R stack does not get backed up at all. Nowhere does does at least for now the 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 R's my my content from all my Plex media except for my photos, my personal photos which isn't even in Plex right now. Um, all of that is in, um, it d does not get backed up. But everything else from these two files, let's pull in Resilio, um, can actually see what's kind of going on here, is uh, especially, okay, so Moto Mini 2 is, is pretty much dedicated to my footage. So anything from a camera SD card, anything from a phone, that's video that's going to be used for my YouTube channel goes in Moto Mini. That's what's in there. Moto Mini 01 is uh, R stack, uh, maybe photos, uh, kind of kind of a more roomy swap area, kind of like an inbox for data uh, where like unorganized data goes to live. But Moto Mini 02 is very much dedicated to my footage. Um, if you're using ours, most of Plex will eventually. Yeah, so I'll I'll have the actual backup, the the data uh, backups from the ours, um, but I won't have the media files. I'm not backing up the media files. So uh, music, movies, uh, TV shows, uh, porn, not not getting backed up. Uh, personal, anything personal, at least for now, that's the priority to make sure. I have a three, two, one backup. So right now, Moto, Moto Mini O2, since it's dedicated to footage, is getting a direct backup from from the hard drive itself into a folder on Moto Backup O1. Um, and just because I don't have like a, because all three of these are five terabyte drives, and combine these two combined, which are like these are these two combined are like my like main data. And then I have one backup folder. These two combined are already over five terabytes. So I have to I have to find I have to make some consultations, right? So everything gets duplicated to here that I want duplicated in Moto Backup. And that's just using Resilio, right? But I could access Resilio from any of my devices. So as long as something's online, Resilio is based on the BitTorrent clone. Uh, BitTorrent uh, protocol. And so I could be anywhere. I don't even need any of my like tail scale stuff or zero tier. It'll find, it'll find this encrypted and it'll be able to swap files around. And it's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. I actually was considering like getting 
uh, an Android, like an old uh, Android phone or a modern Android phone that still has an SD card in it and getting like a 256 gig SS, uh, micro SD card, sticking it in there and just running Resilio as like a third peer, uh, as just like an additional peer and just like stick it underneath my bus or something and just like constantly power it or like stick it up on the, the roof with like a mini solar panel or something like that. Like just like allow it to connect to my Wi-Fi and be an additional source for making sure that I have as many like peer seeds for my data as possible. So um, yeah, so this config right here is going into another folder. This is taking uh, a config file for all the R stack and actually getting the backup files that it automatically generates and then duplicating them onto uh, the backup file folder as well. Um, I think it's actually uh, duplicating it to uh, Mato Mac one and then I'll have a uh, another, it'll have a folder, I'll have a folder in there called backups or something like that. And uh, it's doing its specific backup to that location. And then I'll have a higher level uh, access to that folder. And then that'll do its backup to the uh, backup drive. And uh, that should include any any other uh, backup tasks, like backup config tasks that I'm doing. So like I'm trying to get, I need to get uh, backups from uh, Home Assistant to automatically send to next to that folder or in that backups folder, I need to get um, backups from um, Unify network application uh, to go in there. Just a, just a handful of other things that I want just to make sure that is getting backed up to uh, at least one location, and then that location is then getting backed up to the, to the um, backup drive. Everything except for media files. So. I will still have like my list of movies, my list of uh, TV shows, my list of uh, music. Uh, I'll just have to re-download it if if shit hits the fan, right? So <clears throat> where was I going next? Oh yeah, and then Backblaze. So then from there, everything goes up to Backblaze in the same fashion. Everything but um, but media files, except for my personal photo photos. Um, and that's it. That's, uh, that's the, the, the data section of everything. Um, I do have Plex running natively on Apple Silicon. In fact, let's see here. Let's, I want to pull up activity monitor and see what we got in terms of, so this is probably the worst it's been. I have a whole bunch of Postgres <laughs> instances, but that's because I'm playing around with DaVinci Resolve server. Uh, so, uh, DaVinci Resolve server, uh, will allow me to like have, it's, it's just a central point for, for all of my project files for DaVinci. Uh, and then I'm also thinking of, uh, or I'm working on a way that like I could be done with a project on my, on my laptop. I'd, I'd likely mostly, or, and have been mostly editing on my laptop. But then I can close that, open it up on the Mac Mini, and do the export from there because it's kind of like a pain in the ass to do it from my laptop when I have to like make sure it stays on for like another like hour while it like uh, renders and then sends up to YouTube on my like not so great internet. Um, you know, just 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 a just a thought that that entered my head and also. They're saying that they're releasing uh, DaVinci for iPad in like the next couple months. So like I'll be able to like access, like immediately access uh, all of my uh, edit projects, whether I want to do it on my on my laptop or on the iPad or like just make a few edits on an, on the iPad and then um, and then um, you know I can clean it up on the laptop and then send it over to the Mac mini and then it can do its final render and upload 
and then I can just put my laptop away and do the the next thing that I want to do. I mean, sometimes I continue to work on my computer, but usually when I'm done editing, I like to close my laptop and uh, just kind of put it away. Um, or, you know, what I end up having to do is like setting it on my desk and like making sure caffeine or amphetamine is on. And uh, and then I, I put like a little, I'll put like this in, in the in the hinge uh and like close it down to that so it doesn't go to sleep but it's still running and it's got caffeine on plug it into power and everything so <clears throat> there's the just one danger option though if it sees a file is deleted it will stop monitoring um yeah i'm not too concerned about it monitoring um specific titles i kind of slow it down for monitoring stuff anyways uh, I do that like kind of like by default is I just keep it as like a this is the stuff that I want kind of location and uh, and then I go in. So, for example, I'm like I have literally all of the James Bond movies in there, but like I'm not quite ready to start at the first Casino Royale. Right. Uh, so like and like a couple weeks or like a few months ago, I was like, I want to watch the Pierce Brosnan one. So like, I made sure I had them all in there because that was the time that I was thinking of like James Bond movies. But like, I only went for the Brosnan movies and uh, got those. And then when I'm ready for, you know, Connery or whoever, like, I can do that. You know, I, I love it. And then and then, you know, I have I have stuff that's like, it's 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 almost very similar to like how how I'm doing like stuff that isn't even out yet, right? It's like you put it in there and and say, "Hey, I want this," and then it'll grab it when it's ready, or I can go and find it when it's ready. It had a really hard time with with um, uh, Jurassic World Dominion, the last one, the most recent, or yeah, the most recent one. It just like it kept downloading like fake releases, and I'm just like, please stop please stop. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, so oh, and additionally, so um, obviously, since I'm running hard drives here, and over the network, uh, I have this two terabyte SSD NVMe USB C thing. And I want to put this in the mix as well, as like, what I used to call fast media when I was doing editing at the time, I, I'd have uh, I'd always have like a drive called fast media and slow media. And so uh, Moto Mini O2 is probably going to be my slow media. But what I'll do is have a folder in there called fast media, and then it will just sync with this. And then my hope is also that I can bring this and plug it into my uh, MacBook Pro, and then it'll also be able to sync with that folder as well. I'm not sure um, if it'll work that way because it's already like set up as like the local folder share, and like I'm not sure if it's also going to be able to be set up as like a remote regular share. Uh, so uh, still working on that one, uh, but I'm hoping because like it would be great if I could like if I just happen to have it um connected to my laptop and I wanted to import footage like recent footage I could literally just drop it onto here and then while I'm working it'll sync back to my server into the fast media folder and then when I'm done with projects I can um I can kind of I can package anything up that's in fast media and then put it into an archive folder and and all the while, all all the while everything's getting backed up to the backup, the local backup, and then also to Backblaze as well, which is, I have it. I finally, I finally fucking have, I finally fucking have my backup and data solution. Uh, and I didn't need to use a RAID system. I, I literally did not need to use a RAID system. And I, and I'm absolutely in love with the fact that I didn't need to uh, do any, any fucking RAID at all. Uh, if one of these drives fails, I replace it. Oh, sorry. Uh, and uh, load 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 it from the backup, and it's good to go. It's just like it it just I don't know way way better system than 
constantly dealing with like a flipped parody bit, right? Let's continue. Oh yeah, of course I'm running Malvad on this server right here, on the Mac Mini server. It's actually just a native native installation of Malvad. Um, the name is Fate, Doctor Fate. <laughs> uh, I I might do something a little bit different for this. I might eventually move transmission and flood to um, my uh, my Linux VM because uh, under Docker. Uh, just because, uh, I, I actually can't. So the thing is, is I can't run tail scale directly on this machine, uh, because I have, it'll fight with, it'll fight with this. It'll fight with Malvad. Malvad and tail scale can't be on the same like instance. Um, it can, it can run, probably run containerized or in the VM, no problem. Uh, and that'll kind of keep, uh, you know, transmission and flood and um uh, and mulvad separate so i'll have better like internal availability and then it then tail scale will be able to give it one of its own ip addresses um right now i'm just using the home assistant raspberry pi as an exit node for tail scale so then tail scale just opens up my network so if any any computer connected or machine with the tail scale app logged into my account um, can then just use my local subnet for anything, which is nice. It's super nice, but I feel like it might be a little bit, it's a little slow sometimes. Uh, it's not the greatest. Uh, the um, My connection to Home Assistant when I'm on my phone on the bus or something is not, definitely not as uh, snappy as it was through um, through Nabucasa. And I, I would absolutely love to support Nabucasa, but like, I just I I gotta I gotta get rid of these monthly fees. Uh, I've I've already canceled Dropbox. I canceled. Let's see what I let's see what I got here. I canceled Dropbox. Um, I switched back from Crash Plan to Backblaze, which is cheaper, so seven dollars a month. I might do that as a yearly, which is seventy dollars a year, I believe. Um, my phone is only thirty dollars a month. My internet is only fifty dollars a month, but I pay that quarterly, uh, so one hundred fifty dollars every three months. Uh, but eventually, hopefully, I can do the yearly, which is four hundred dollars a year, which gets me down to like thirty three dollars a month for my internet. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, I had a couple domain like custom domains uh, on um, Google Workplace, uh, and I switched that over to uh, Soho. And now that is $24 a year instead of $12 a month. So uh, actually, I think I have, let's see what my notes say here. What else did I get rid of? Backblaze. Oh yeah, and I got rid of 1Password. That's one of the things that I want to show off to is, um, is NPass. Cody, I think you said you use NPass already, if you're still here, Cody. Is real time still real time? Yeah, and and pass and pass is sick. I I absolutely adore and pass, and that's one of those that's one of those things. Oh yeah, so along with and pass, um, uh, Resilio has a license fee. It's a single it's a single uh, payment license fee. Uh, I got it for thirty nine dollars through Stack Social. Uh, it looks like that's a pretty regular deal. They'll say it's like ending in a week, but it's not. And then there's like Stack Social is actually like has like a duplicate site through like ZDNet or something like that. I don't remember. Um, anyways, it's normally seventy nine dollars for the lifetime, but I got it for about half. Uh, they send you like a code. You go into the website and you just download. You get you get a you get a license. I mean, their license is hosted on their server. Uh, so like you just basically, it's just tied to your email. Uh, but it's a lifetime, it's a lifetime uh, uh, license. And Resilio is also has like a pro version that's $79. That kind of, I think some of the stuff that I went over that Resilio can do uh, is only available for, for pro users. But you, you'd have to look into that. I actually got the license when I was still on uh, Unraid and uh, it just on Unraid it felt so broken in Docker on Unraid. 
backend, like in Linux, uh, or Unraid isn't even Linux. Unraid is uh, BSD, I think. Uh, so yeah, it just felt really broken in in Unraid, and uh, it it was too. It was just like it's just like. Um, so here's the thing: is I hate to admit it, but I'm an all Mac person. I'm an I'm like fully in on the whole Apple thing, but. I'm not in on the like walled garden thing, right? So like I love the hardware, I love the operating system. I'm just like trying to make it work for me, right? In 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 a in a very I'm trying to make it work in a very Linux way and it doesn't like uh yeah, Tim Tim, I have, you know, I buy I buy used stuff, I buy refurbished stuff. I currently have uh an iPhone 10 that I bought used last year. Uh, and I literally just broke the screen, which sucks, but like, you know, I, I love this shit. Uh, but like the thing is, is I'm in, I'm, I'm in Apple. So like when I tried to like make a local backup in Resilio while I was on Unraid, I wanted it to be EX fat so that it could like, I could have like a grab and grow, go copy of whatever it is that I have. Right. It just didn't want to do it. It just it 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 had to be um, ext four or or like butterfs or something that was native right to Linux or even BSD and yeah it would it would be super nice if they supported eGPUs but like um, I don't know their GPU stuff is is really really impressive as is like I'm really impressed I'm I'm absolutely personally blown away by what they have been able to do with an ARM platform. Like, just absolutely blown away. Like, you've been seeing this above my head the entire time, is that I have all of these services running, and it's only pulling 13 watts, right? Like, and and I have three to it. Not only that, it's pulling 13 watts, but 13 watts with three two and a half inch drives on there, right? Like, three... Three hard drives, spinning platters, five terabytes. Not those; those are at least two two watts a piece, if not three watts a piece. So the, the hardware itself is easily only pulling like six watts right now, seven watts, which is like pretty much what it was pulling day one when I had it clean, which is super impressive. And like, yeah, we have some spikes there, but that's from like which I'll get to. I I installed a. Uh, photo structure and uh and it went through and literally hashed all of my my videos and my photos uh last night and it it just like yeah when the m2 when the m2 like the next gen like the the pros and the the max and the ultras uh come out uh those are gonna be sick the current the current um rumor is that it's gonna be around march and they're going to be able to get those on three nanometer, uh, which is just like even even fucking cooler. Like there there were problems with the M2 Air being, you know, throttling pretty hard. But once they get that chip on three nanometer, it'll be fine. Uh, significantly less heat from five to f- five to three uh, and, and still like similar, per- if not better performance. So um yeah i i uh yeah i i only have a gigabit to mine right now i i i got mine when when the one gigabit was only the only available option but i think i think if this can be like a regular like if i i'm 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 thinking about at some point like literally writing the script to just rebuild this server if necessary and like the next time i have a grand uh I'm getting the next generation with the 10 gig connection uh, when it makes sense for me to do that. And uh, yeah, that's going to be that's going to be killer because um, like by that time, like I said, there'll be three nanometer. They'll be on three nanometer. The power will be even less. Yeah. Well, my MacBook Pro is is super sick for for everything honestly i haven't had a computer i personally have not had a laptop that um uh one second has been able to keep up with me in years absolute fucking years 
All right, so nothing too incriminating here. But yeah, uh, it's it's your standard password manager. But the super cool thing is that one of these can be a server. So this is the one that's running on the Mac Mini, uh, and it is the server for my MacBook Pro, my iPad, and my iPhone, and uh, free for life. Literally, like I was literally about to pay $33 for, and like early December, I was gonna pay another $33 to, to one password. <clears throat> and once I saw that deal for $39 for this, for a lifetime, it's just, it just made me, it just, it just made perfect sense, especially with what I was doing here. And it's native, it's Intel, or it's, it's uh, Apple Silicon native. Right now, uh, like we were talking, the only things that I have, so photo structure is, uh, is Intel only right now, but they're working on a 2.1. They're at 1.1 and they're working on a 2.1. I don't know all the features, but I do know that Apple Silicon is targeted to be a feature. Uh, and that's just uh, like a like a photo library thing. So I can access my big photos list from, from the server. I still haven't figured out entirely what I'm going to do with photos yet, but I'm working on that. Um, Sonar. Sonar is the only holdout right now for Intel or Apple Silicon. So... Um, I think they're working on a 4.0 at the moment, which is Alp Apple Silicon ready, uh, but I have no idea when that's gonna be out. And the weird thing about all of these is that you have to uh, self-sign them, which means you have to create a, 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 um, a certificate in Keychain and then run a command and they don't tell you that you need a certificate because they're all developers anyways. They already have certificates in there in on their machines. <clears throat> but if you're starting with a clean slate and and don't have any certificates, go into um, go into uh, keychain access and uh, make just like make uh, a software signing certificate. Uh, I loved my Intel Mac until I started working in VR via immersed app gpu in 2019 macbook pro is a dog compared to a bottom end macbook air yeah totally the whole the whole i think the whole like 2016 to 2019 intel max were absolute dog shit like the <clears throat> the whole USB C only era of macbooks Except for except for like the airs, the airs were always like the same, anyways. But like I don't know, I I actually completely skipped that entire era of of MacBooks because uh, I didn't have the money for them. And um, I mean, I'm lucky enough to have the money to get these, <coughs> to have these, to have these Macs. I'm super privileged to like be able to own like a two thousand dollar laptop and a like an eight hundred dollar. Uh, mini computer that's my server uh so but um yeah i went to windows for a period of time i went i i i, I uh, hp had some really beautiful hardware i got a, a scepter x360 and that was all oh, that was a gorgeous laptop um and then i kind of just like played around with different stuff i had a surface uh i had um i had a couple services over that period of time i really loved the surface uh, this, I just, I just love that fa form factor, which is why I'm like super upset that they're not bringing or not yet bringing the, um, the new keyboard folio to the Mac, the, the, the iPad airs. Cause that just, that form factor is just, is killer, I think. And I think it would be perfect. I honestly, I, I get why they did it, but like, I hate the, I, I personally hate the magic keyboard. I just want the magic folio keyboard. Yeah, that they put on the new Mac, the new the new i like base iPad, uh, and uh, it's it it just won't work because they moved the the connector. Um, so yeah, but yeah, I I think over time we're we're gonna see uh, most of this uh, get cleaned up. DaVinci Resolve server is Apple, but it's the one that's creating all these Postgres in instances, and I. <sighs> I don't know, man. It's 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 a weird application. 
uh, I I still have to play with it a little bit more, and it's just it's just a weird one. Um, so yeah, what else we got? What else can I talk about? I haven't I ha- I installed Calibre, but I haven't played with it yet. Um, oh, let me show you something really interesting. So um, on Linux computers, there is a service called LaunchD. I believe it's called LaunchD or Systemd. Systemd on uh, on Linux and LaunchD on Mac. And Systemd is super easy. Like if you want something to run as a daemon or like a service in the background, like anything, pretty much. It's just like a single command line. But with with uh, LaunchD in Mac OS, you have to write uh you have to write like a huge uh i don't i don't know like the the whole lore behind system d but at least in from my experience in in just making a daemon or service it's super easy uh but in mac you have to write a whole plist file which is xml and you have to like learn a whole bunch of shit to just write a plist file or write a startup plist file uh luckily uh, a few services like so, like Brew. If you download anything through through Brew, it'll automatically do that for you. Um, you can just set it as a as a service um, with a Brew command. Um, but in Mac, it's just just generally in Mac. I I agree. Brew should totally come with Mac. I'm actually having trouble getting it installed on my MacBook Pro for some reason. And uh, yeah. Uh, it, I have it on on the server, but uh, it's not on MacBook Pro. But I have been playing around with the. Uh, I actually uh, found this by figuring out how to um, get UTM to start to launch uh, a VM at at login. Right. So uh, in shortcuts, uh, I call it Mod Ubuntu. Uh, it's really simple. It's literally just a utm colon slash slash and then start and then the name of your VM. And then you just open that URL and that's it. That's literally it. But the key here is, okay, so this is just a shortcut. You'll have to hit the shortcut key to get it going, right? But if you add that to the dock, right? I have it right here. Uh, You can go to options, show in finder, and it creates a dot app that you can then drag into your start. So right here, I have start flood UI, which is in here, just a shell script, the flood UI. And I just saw this yesterday, but if you look up here in the, in the, in the menu bar, it actually has the flood UI running right there so I can kill it if I need to. Uh, so this is all, I, I love all of, all of this. I love it. Um, so that's given me some ideas for things. So like, <clears throat> first of all, it's made booting stuff, like booting specific things that aren't necessarily, uh, or like deep, they're, they're like deep linked in an application or uh, shell scripts or, you know, whatever. Uh, it just makes things, this, this, this opportunity, I, and, and, and I've actually been playing around and, and doing some other stuff in shortcuts and kind of finding some of like, the weird stuff it can do. Um, in fact, I I made one. Um, this is one that I found a couple years ago when I was on my iPhone, and uh, it can actually send just torrent links, magnet links to transmission your transmission server. Um, I'm playing around with like using it to send s- certain information to Home Assistant as well. Uh, and and this one's fun. This one this is one. Uh, this is kind of part of like my data hoarding thing that I want to do is um, I was able to. So I've had this on my mind for months. Absolutely. Uh, this is just like some random thing that I wanted for months. Over the summer, I built, uh, if you go back to my last VOD on my YouTube channel, you'll see I talked about uh, this boy, which is a... Raspberry Pi 3 with a um, PoE hat and a mini PCIe hat with a SIM card slot. So I can put uh, an LTE modem in there and 
can put an LTE modem in here and send it up in a SIM card and send it up on a mast. And it ran <coughs> a Ruder Golden Orb, which is a fork of um, OpenWRT. And they kind of release at a weird schedule and don't really have like an easy way to like know when stuff, stuff comes out, right? So uh, I was actually using some of the auto builds too. So like the, they're not, they're not quite nightlies, but they have some auto builds uh, that happen like about weekly, every two weekly um, for specific uh, facts. Let's pull up, um, pull up the firmware list. So it has its uh, official firmwares and here are the pre-releases. And I was running, I was running a pre-release and you can see this uh, this page just has like tons of different hardware that they built for. Just let's move this over so you all can see a little bit. Uh, Asus, uh, D-Link, Comfast, Beeline, uh, GLINet. Uh, so I can I can put uh, a version on of this onto uh, the GLINet router that I have. Uh, tons of uh, pretty much every GLINet. There's some. Huawei stuff, some Linksys stuff, put it on some of my Mikrotik stuff if I wanted to. Uh, I don't know if my stuff is on here, but I haven't really looked through this. Um, I think this is more for the, the bare boards that they sell. Uh, a Mophie or Netgear, Orange Pi, and here's a Raspberry Pi, right? So beautifully, now I didn't want to write like a whole dang script or anything. Uh, and I was just kind of playing around with this today. And I noticed that you can get the contents of a web page, and then you can get URLs from the contents of a web page, right? And then I can match those to a regex uh, reading Raspberry Pi 4 or CM4, which is what I wanted, because I also have a CM4 that I want to rebuild for, <clears throat> and then uh, blah, 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 dot set, right? And then uh, another piece of software that I'm going to have to buy is this, uh, this app that I, ha I have I'm done with my trial for, uh, called Transloader. And what Transloader does is it allows, it is, it co connects all your devices together and then you can tell, uh, like, let's say you're on your phone and you like encounter a download link and you're like, I want to make sure that I have this for later. And I always end up just forgetting about it or I'll leave the tab open as if I'm going to come back to it. Right. I never go back to phone tabs ever. Um, but what Transloader does is allows you to download it and specify which machine can download it. So, uh, you know, if my laptop was awake, I could I could it could be running in the background. Uh, it runs uh, up at the um, top of the screen and then. Uh, or in the menu bar. And obviously with the server, it's always running. So uh, yeah, I could just send it a link and it'll it'll download uh, that file. And it has some ability to kind of like um, do authentication and stuff like that. If like you can hop you out to the browser or it has a built-in browser to let you authenticate for certain sites and stuff. But uh, right now, this isn't this isn't complete. Uh, I'm gonna need to have to I'm gonna have to figure out how to match it to what's been downloaded already. But what I want is um, hopefully I can get uh, just keep an archive of not only these auto builds but also um, the 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 official like stable builds, right? <clears throat> just so I have them around. I'd love I I. I always have this kind of like shit hits a fan mentality where like, you know, what if, what if I don't have internet and I need a specific thing? And that, that's one of those specific things that I might need uh, is firmware to make a router out of a Raspberry Pi. So um, the funny thing, <laughs> the funny thing about shortcuts is you can't do uh, automations I don't believe you can do like time-based automations. Uh, that's interesting. 
you can't do the time-based automations on a Mac. You could do them on an iPhone, but you can't do them on a Mac. So it, it, it's funny that that's what this, this translator app is for, because then I can just run the, the script, the shortcut on my, on my iPhone like once a week, and then it'll just send the downloads, the download uh, uh, instructions to the server, and then it'll, it'll, the server will just have those downloading. Uh, those firmware files will download and then be available when I need them. Uh, so yeah, I'm uh, I'm pretty stoked that like I'm kind of stumbling into like weird, interesting ways to do things. Um, uh, PhotoSync is like my last one that I'm really playing with. It's it's a really simple. I have not really done anything with it yet because I'm trying to get. Uh, you saw that I'm doing a a Google Takeout. Uh, right now, so I'm 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 downloading all of my shit from everywhere right now. I'm just getting everything backed up. I think my last holdout right now is iCloud. I'm still paying ten dollars a month for iCloud. Uh, if I have to, I'll drop that down to the two hundred gig. But I'm at like I'm at like nine gigs right now. So like I, I'm pretty sure I can get rid of uh, get myself under that five gig limit and um, just stop using iCloud altogether. Because uh, if you use, the great thing is, is that um, there is a service for the Photos app. Uh, I think it's called, what's it called? I don't want to bring it up. Uh, camera. I mean, uh, it was it was around since before iCloud happened. PhotoStream. So uh, basically, uh, Basically, it still uses, it doesn't actually, I don't believe it uses any of your iCloud data per se, but what it does is it uses, it uses Apple servers temporarily to uh, upload your photos and videos. Uh, it just says photos, so it might just be photos, which we'll have to work around. That'll be something that I'm going to have to think about uh, in terms of like how I want to get you know, I shoot, I shoot quite a bit with my iPhone. In fact, that's kind of why I got the iPhone was I was on a Pixel 3. I just wanted a better camera uh, and uh, especially for video because like, what's the saying? Like the best camera is the one that you have on you. So um, yeah, so I just wanted a better camera. So I'll have to think about how I'm syncing stuff to the server and then how I'll, how I'll have access to it. But PhotoStream is probably great for like, um, for like at least photos if it's not going to do videos but it, it'll like i said it uploads to apple servers and then it'll uh, uh when when uh the photos app opens or is open it'll save it locally to uh to your local icloud or your local photo library uh which is nice i i still like the photos app i like the photos app on on Mac, and I would like to continue to use uh, continue to use it. I, I do. Uh, I am playing. Like I said, I I am playing around with Photo Structure. Uh, let me see if I can show you Photo Structure. Um, hopefully, I don't have any <coughs> lewds in Photo Structure. Actually, let's let's do this off off camera because uh, I have it. I the one thing I do like about Photo Structure is it has uh, like a web view. Okay, so let's. That's weird. More, <clears throat> more OBS problems. Sorry, y'all. Just do this on desktop. Oh, more problems. Display capture. Oh, it does not like what has. They updated the 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 screen capture to Apple Apple whatever. We'll go back here and maybe I'll. Sh yeah, it should be fine. So yeah. So let's go back to app and screen. Thanks for coming by. I really appreciate you stopping in. Let's see who else is here. Uh, oh yeah, there's some there's some lewds in here. Sorry about that. Uh, oh wow, are these are these people all in here right now, or are they like I don't understand how this is working. I have OAX two Academy Impossible, Lysidra, Alien Gathering, Baron of Deep Dip, Ziffin. Wow, a lot of people showed up. Looks like there's not a lot of people. Uh, Thanks, Groctopus. Uh, I will I will chat with you on uh, on the Fediverse uh, later. Thanks for coming in. Appreciate it. Um, trying to do these 
definitely trying to do these uh, more often. I really appreciate you real time uh, for, for being on every one of these so far. Uh, it means a lot to me. I wasn't, I wasn't super feeling it today. I was like, I almost pulled it yesterday and I was like, nah, I gotta, I gotta do this. Um, I gotta, this is what I want to do. I want to do these. And if I want to do these, I got to do these. So, <laughs> uh, at a, you know, sometimes, sometimes you got to tell your brain to shut the fuck up. So, uh, yeah, so I'm playing around with photo structure. It's, it's okay. It is what it is. It's, I'm not, I'm not super jazzed about it. I'd actually really like to keep things in, in, um, in the photos app if possible. Um, or find, maybe keep like a set of stuff in the photos app and a set of stuff in photo structure. Not quite exactly sure. Uh, but then there's there's the uh, the photo sync app, which is nice. Uh, apparently, so Resilio does have a feature to sync photos, sync your photos to a uh, a Resilio folder, but it doesn't work very well, uh, and it won't work in the background. In fact, Resilio just won't work in the background at all. Like, won't sync in the background. So you have to regularly like open it up. Like, if you're if it's been a while, you got to open up Resilio and let it sync, and then. Uh, especially on the phone at least which is fine like totally fine on the phone and and on the ipad totally fine uh kind of a pain in the ass but well, you, you know whatever um if you if you need to like access it from from another application right uh so photosync apparently does work uh in the background and is like pretty much like the go-to app like anywhere you look reddit uh, uh the I think the home the home assistant forms I saw people talking about it. I saw uh, I watched a YouTube video the other day, and he it was just like it's almost just like the default for syncing uh, an iPhone to a server, right? Uh, and it can also send photos into the Photos app too. So like that's that's a backup if. Um, if photo library doesn't do everything that I want, but I do kind of want, I would, I wouldn't mind photos or videos not going into the photos app. Uh, Cause most of the stuff that I shoot is for TikTok or for um, YouTube anyways. So it's going to go in that, in that edit, that edit folder anyways. So um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much, I think the gist of my server. Oh, uh, the last thing is UTM. I didn't go over UTM yet. UTM is a wrapper for the, I forgot what it's called. It's a wrapper for one of the one of the hypervisors uh, that's available, and it is currently probably the most stable from what I've from from my research. It's the most stable of the the VM options out there, and I'm not even I'm not even really I'm not. Uh, I'm I'm just virtualizing. I'm not um, I'm not emulating anything. So I'm I'm actually running in in UTM. I'm running uh, an ARM64 version of Ubuntu server. And on that Ubuntu server, I have Portainer. Oh yeah, that's right. I need passwords. I still need to set up the the um the server with uh. I, I need to set this. Uh, oh, it's right here. I forget that's right here, but it's. I don't think it's like fully set up or anything. Oh yeah, it's right there. Whatever. Oh right, but I need to. I don't have. I don't have uh, Touch ID on the um, on the server, so like I have to type my super long um, password to get it. Right now on here, the only thing that we have pin. Oh right, I can set up a pin. That's right, I can set up a pin. Uh, I think I'm gonna do that. That's a good idea. Uh, I f I totally I I saw that feature and I I forgot to enable that. Uh, yeah, that's good. That's that's perfect. That's exactly what I want. Um, Cause like nobody's gonna fucking nobody's gonna fucking like steal my computer and try to keep it on, right? <laughs> like if somebody steals my server, they're just gonna rip it out and like take it with them. Uh, so. Uh, it's currently mounted right now, but 
Yeah, I mean, it's already connected to like it, it's it's gonna you're pro it's probably gonna lose power. They're probably gonna rip it out. Anybody coming in here to like steal anything is just gonna rip shit out. So and uh, eventually, I think the next step for this thing actually at this point might be to design an enclosure for all this shit. As uh, I literally have like the the Mac Mini underneath my desk in like a. <laughs> in in like a one of those like wall mounts under mount desk mount things it's like just like a little abs clip clip thing and then i have one hard drive currently double-sided taped to the underside of the desk and then i have the two hard drives uh right here i have the two hard drives right here on like a USB C to like four port usb hub so i want to get all the three all three drives on the on the hub uh, I think the, the USB-C port should handle it. I looked up the spec, it's 15 watts. Uh, I mean, like, I'm literally, that's the entire load of the systems right now. So, like, probably more than likely can handle it. Um, and then I want to uh, pull the pull the PCB, the logic board, out of the Mac Mini enclosure. Uh, I got to do a DC conversion. Uh, I, have, I have the... Um, Oh yeah, they're right here. These are suggested uh, as uh, DC um, buck converters. So I'm just gonna I'm gonna have the ability to like just directly plug it into 24 volts anywhere in my bus, and then this will bump it down to 12, uh, and it's five amps. So like. 60 watt peak on this boy so yeah that should that should that should do it um and then i think on the case i'll have uh anderson pp a pp plug and uh that can just plug in 24 volts wherever and then kind of i think in like a stack of the drives uh, i want to keep them kind of separate from each other so i can also maybe put like a like two or three fans maybe like two fans hopefully i can do like two fans about this wide and and blow some air through these because when these get going they get they get toasty uh oh speaking of which i found i found the one thing that's gonna make me feel okay doing it this way is a fucking smart tool for uh i also have to buy a license for, for uh, of, of course another another paid application but you know the pulling doing shit this way is it's just as long as it's a lifetime license i'm okay with it and i think this is another like 20 or 30 dollar license uh that i need to pick up and it is a smart like it actually there's a driver that allows you to get uh information from smart uh and uh from like the 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 drive info drive smart s s like s dot s s dot m dot a dot r dot t dot uh i think i can op I, I let me see can i can i do what is it called it's called drive dx drive come on dude buddy there it is i think this hopefully this is like come on bud show yourself oh here we go uh open drive dx oh okay try now okay cool i still have uh okay i got 11 days left uh but yeah so i actually have monitoring if you've ever used a mac before you'll know that if you go into disk utility and like check even like the built-in drive there's no smart information it just says not supported uh it, it'll it has the line item it says smart status and that'll just say not supported any drive all the fucking time. So finally found a uh, a driver that will not only get me the drive uh, status, like the smart status from all of my drives, not only the internal drive, but also external drives too over USB, uh, but also like send me stats too. Like this will send me like a weekly update or if something goes wrong or if I'm getting, if I have, if I'm having a problem. But yeah, all of, all of the the counters are here. Uh, 
it, it actually what's really interesting too is um i bought these drives over the over a period of time and the first two drives in here are 4800 rpm drives and the most recent one that i got is a 5600 drive which i can see in here absolutely bonkers to me where is it right there or 5400 rpm drive um so yeah so that's interesting unfortunately yeah 4800 is really odd i actually have another one in a that I actually have to send back or send in for an RMA, and it's not the same style as these. <clears throat> All of these drives have USB-C ports on the bottom uh, or on the body. Uh, the other one that I have is a is a five terabyte. Or is it? A, yeah, it's a five terabyte, but it has the shitty wide micro USB three on it. Um, I don't know. I can't. I I I um I wonder. Does my, does, I have a little USB tester thingy. Uh, I, I hated that connector so much. Oh my God. I remember when Samsung put one of those on. I like the fact that it's backwards compatible, but like Samsung put one of those on their, on a phone. My sister had one. It was hilarious. <laughs> oh my God. I can't, I can't believe it. It's just so, it's just so, it's such a silly connector. And it's so like, it, it doesn't feel solid when you're connected to it. Like it feels like it's always going to disconnect. Uh, yeah, it was a chunky boy. It was literally uh, like a decade ago. I remember because it was, I remember my sister having it at my party before my bottom surgery. And that was literally coming up on a decade ago. Or that was that was a decade ago this year. 2000. No, not even. No, it was like eight years ago. I'm, I'm losing. Next month is my 10-year HRT verse. Um, so, yeah, I'm getting my time mixed up. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I'm super happy that I have uh, this app. I, I do need to buy a license for it. It is a singular perpetual license. Uh, it may be like a version license, but quite frankly, I don't care. Uh, as long as this continues to work uh, and if they have like cool features in the future, I will give them money for it. Um, so yeah, uh, drive DX. Anyways, back to uh, Ubuntu VM. Here's Pertainer. Uh, I think I showed you Overseer before. That is the um, kind of like the request engine for radar and sonar. So um, eventually, I, I actually really like it because I can actually go through like movies and stuff, and like you know, it'll show like the the, the actors that are in it. Let's you know, I might want like a uh, more movies with Daniel Craig in them, right? So I can just click Daniel Craig, or like I have you know. I have one of the James Bond movies and I'm on that page and I click his face and then I see all the Daniel Craig movies or I like um, a few months back, I wanted to, uh, I wanted to get all the, um... who's the, who's the, <sighs> I'm going to have to look this up. David Cronenberg. I wanted to download it. I wanted to get all Cronenberg's movies and it was just like kind of a pain in the ass to have to Google everything and like, whatnot but like it's really cool to like be able to go in there and like look through movies uh yeah super important what is this what is this let me pull this up i i'm having like display issues so i'd, I'd pull it up on my other on my normal chrome, chrome browser but apparently i can only do shit in here right now so uh, uh that's portainer 5055 so oh this is gonna make me so i can sign in with plex come on dude Oh, it just use your flex. Oh, cool. I'm already saying. So what's cool is, is like anybody on my network who has a Plex account and I've given them permission to my Plex can have access to it. Uh, and then they can request stuff and then I can like approve it on my time or just auto approve stuff. Uh, or like if somebody's getting a little bit too crazy, you know, make sure that every all the approvals have to go through me and then I can get a notification to approve stuff. Uh, obviously it's approving everything automatically uh, for me. So everything automatically goes into radar or sonar. And this is only 
<clears throat> movies and TVs, TV right now, uh, I would love to see this kind of interface for movies. But yeah, like I'm, I think I just got Pitch Black. Yeah, I got it. It's downloaded. Uh, but like, I want, yeah, I've seen Plex requests, but this UI is absolutely gorgeous. I think this came out this year. This thing is absolutely beautiful. But like, now I want Vin Diesel movies, right? I want, I haven't seen some of the more recent Fast and Furiouses, and I need to see. In fact, I need all of the Fast and Furious movies. Uh, I don't know. Did I see F9? I think I saw F9. I think I, I just don't remember it. Uh, I have a, I have a very, I have a very, uh, I love, I love all of the movies. Uh, I think there's like one that I wasn't too happy with, but like, I, I absolutely love after like three or four, they just realized what they were doing and were just like, let's fucking send it, bud. Like, let's just fucking make it as ridiculous as possible. And then they, they, they like knew what they were. And just made it as silly as fuck up fucking possible. And I love it. I I have a thing for like ridiculous action movies. And the Fast series just gets me going. I love it so much. And it's such a meme too. So like they fucking jumped two Burj buildings. <laughs> they jumped from one building to another with a car. <laughs> oh, it's so good. Anyways. So yeah, I can just like. I can just go on a rabbit hole in here and just like request tons of movies and TV shows. Um, and you know, uh, I, my long-term, my long-term goal right now is to save up some money, um, and, uh, get some land in SoCal. Joshua tree is pretty nice. Uh, and just kind of make like a queer, like just like a place for queers to hang out if they need to. Uh, especially like transient queers like myself um, and just have like resources for them if they want to they can build a little shack or a warehouse or something on, on the property or they can have access to like you know the the main shared shop and I'll probably have my own shop uh, at least uh, and just I don't know I, I really I don't really even know what I want to do with it yet but I, I want it to kind of just be open and I just need I need space to do some of my stuff I am I am running out of room for tools and um, it's going to get significantly more sketch for me living on, you know, parked on the side of a street in in Berkeley or Oakland. Um, not even possible to do in San Francisco. Um, so, like, I definitely need to start planning ahead to um, have a spot to, like, expand a little bit. I'd probably I'll definitely still live in my bus, but like. I think the first thing I'd build is in out there is like a garage, maybe get like a metal building or something like that. And then like once people come in, they can jump on the Internet and get access to the Plex server. And then eventually maybe there's like a main Plex server at at the location. Uh, and uh, then it just like duplicates some stuff to like my Plex server in here. Maybe I like scale scale down the Plex server that I have in here and then like have a main one uh, at that location that can kind of like uh, duplicate itself to other people. And then the, and then there, there's your backup, right? The, then there, there's the media backup uh, is uh, is a distributed is a distributed uh, Plex servers for multiple people. So uh, super, super into that concept because uh, people always have like problems with keeping their servers alive so uh if we could have like and resilio would be honestly resilio would be great for that you know like somebody has like a tiny plex server in their bus uh somebody has you know a ple plex server on the east coast just resilio an entire library between a multitude of people and just have like one source of truth right think about the logistics on that one but like uh, very interesting co concepts. Uh, the only other like main service that I have in uh, running in Docker, and and I didn't really get into this actually so much, is uh, I tried I tried really hard to run Docker in macOS, and it's fucking garbage. It's absolutely terrible. In fact, I feel like 
I feel like my Mac is worse for even trying to install it. It's one of those. Uh, and I highly recommend never run Docker on on a Mac in in Mac. It's just it's horrific. You can't get anything running. And just setting up a VM with Linux, which like during the install process had Docker Docker engine. And you don't have to worry about like Docker desktop on Linux. Like you can't even just do basic Docker on Mac OS. You cannot just get Docker engine for Mac OS. You have to the whole Docker desktop. Um, Cause it's almost virtualizing everything anyways. Like it's literally like running emulation to like create Linux installs or like base base Linux systems that you can like have shared like uh, resources on, like a shared kernel and whatnot. But like just fucking just do it the right way and run a run a run a VM. UTM, like I said, is probably the most um, probably the most stable out of all of them. Uh, I know VirtualBox just had a release that's uh, Apple Silicon compatible. Uh, I played around with uh canonicals canonical has like a really interesting service for um spinning up just like really simple vms uh i forget what it's called but they just had an m1 release and it's a really interesting system i couldn't get the networking to work on on them but uh i was also having problems with networking on UTM, but then literally just one switch um and it was fine and and the 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 VM has its own IP, so it has um, it has a static reservation. Uh, it actually it the it the I, I I had to run it a few times, but I eventually got it, so it, it would boot and request a specific IP address that I have allocated in like the lower the lower numbers. I think I blocked out like one through ten or two two through ten on my um, on my DHCP uh, for specific like self self setting uh ips uh and i was able to set that up got that running great it works great it's super smooth getting all of these in were great uh getting portainer installed was super easy uh and means that i can kind of like get some more stuff going uh i'm playing around with ghost uh i like having a docker install just like available like it's just so nice to have like be able to just like spin up some like simple applications in uh in docker and just play around with them and then like yeet them when they no longer suit you right so uh ghost is like a blogging platform i'm kind of like kind of like trying to figure out what i want to do for my next website uh for voidbox specifically because that's it's really my only income source going to be my only income source uh moving forward with um my custom PCBs for Home Assistant or ESP Home specifically, uh, mainly to like, I'll, I, I should, uh, I need to do a stream specifically about what I'm working on and kind of get everything like organized to get up on Tindy because I have, I have a lot to do. I think, I think maybe that'll be the one that I do in two weeks, although I'm going to be uh, outside of Sacramento in the, in the mountains in, in two weeks, probably. So um, I might not be able to do a live stream in two weeks. Uh, so I'm hoping that I can get, um, well, I have been releasing the VODs, uh, right next to the next live stream. So, uh, maybe, uh, maybe it'll help me get like a, a staggered release cycle a little bit more. And, uh, but hopefully, um, hmm, trying to think, uh, I, I also want like with uh, with all this stuff starting to become like a little bit more organized, especially with my footage and stuff, because like a lot of this footage is from 2019, 2018, potentially. Uh, I think I lost some more footage, but like, uh, I don't know. I yeah, I, I was supposed to have more footage than that. But like I, I uh, oh, yeah, because pro- it was probably on my old NAS. Um, Anyways, like I have, I have all my footage from like 2019, uh, like beginning of 2019 too. And, um, I just need to go through it and edit stuff and like make cohesive stories and, uh, maybe do some pickup shots if, 
if necessary or even possible now that so much time has has uh has gone by so like i got i got the transmission rebuild i got um you know some early like building on the bus uh i got the mast installation uh for and 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 maybe i'll i'll do something that's a little bit more concise about the lte stuff uh rather than just like me rambling on about for an hour and then like failing to install the newest <laughs> my newest piece of hardware it did get installed though i was uh, <laughs> uh that was a, that was a funny story um if you use the quick setting in in router os uh it should be able to should set everything for you like when you change your um actually the funny thing is I didn't even notice the second time, but I fucked up writing the um, both times that I tried setting up my own IP range because it wants to do like 192.68.88 like or something like that. And I'm just like, I hate 192 names, number spaces anyways. So like I always set my shit to 10 dot um, and uh, I fucked it up twice on that stream. I noticed I didn't even notice the second one until I watched uh and until I watched the VOD while I was editing it. And the I I put an extra character in the fourth uh number space uh and uh, both times and <laughs> completely yeeted itself. But the yeah, 192 is a super bad I, I hate it. 192 is like a super bad bad vibe. Uh and I well, here's what's funny too, is when <laughs> more 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 of me being part of apple ecosystem is is that's what apple used to use on their airports is that the 10 dot is exactly what apple would would use as their default on all of their routers all of all of them came with 10 dot uh and i i and that was around the time that i was learning how to do static how to and why to do static IP reservations. And at the time I was doing them in the router. In fact, I haven't been doing, I actually have been doing static IPs in the router up until like six months ago, till I realized that you can just block off. You can just tell the DHCP server to like, just not assign specific um, specific IPs, but keep, but keep them in your net mask. Uh, so like that was only like, within the past like four to six months that I started doing uh setting them on my devices uh I still do two five five two five five two five five zero but uh I'm 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 still learning how to subnet too so and then and then I gotta learn how to do firewall rules with VLANs and all that junk but um I usually keep everything on like on the end on the on the last on the last character set, digit set. And I always forget what they call it. The octet, the last octet uh, is um, is usually where I live. Uh, the second to last octet is where I want to be uh, for at least for my VLANs. And, uh, but I usually keep like, what I've been doing now is I set, uh, you know, routers always at dot one. And then, um, and then th two through 10 are just like, open for the devices themselves to set their own IP addresses. And it, it, I had to do it because I'd, um, I kept changing hardware all the time. I, I kept like literally this summer I went through this year alone, I went through four routers. So I went from my, my GLI to the first Microtik, the SXT to the, um, to the Raspberry Pi on router, uh, back to the GLI, to the uh, LTAP mini, to the WAP AC. So like setting static IPs in the router itself is just like not an option anymore for me. So, uh, but yeah, uh, I, I got the 10 dot, I got comfortable with 10 dot because that's when I did it with Apple, with airport. I had uh, an airport express, I had an airport extreme, I don't think I ever did. I don't think I ever had a time machine. Uh, but my 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 makerspace is still running on a on a time machine or Airport Extreme, like one of the modern airport like a vertical AC 
airport extremes. Um, I, I, I honestly, I, I'd love to see them bring the airports back uh, with AX, but you know, that's another time and place. Um, but yeah, that's where, that's why I learned 10 dot from and just got comfortable with 10 dot. Cause I was like, why is everybody using 192.168 when like you can literally just like super easily type 10.0 way easier than you can type 192.168. Um, <clears throat> I've been on for over two hours now. Two point two and a quarter hours. I think we can go for another like 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes. There's, there's really not much left to do. Uh, I did want to do frigate today, but I don't, I don't think I have it in me to set that up right now. At least y'all know the plan. <clears throat> um, 10-0-3-1-6-9. I'm not sure I follow. 10. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much wrapped up anyways. Um, if anybody else is still here, um, I think we're done for the night. That's, I think, um, I think that's it. I, I do have, uh, I do have the Home Assistant Companion app on here. So where is where is that? Where is she at? Oh, she's not she's not running. I need to get you to boot at start too, bud. Hang out up there. Um, cause she sends some data to Home Assistant. Not a lot. Not not enough for it to be truly worth it. Uh, I I think maybe I'll find some some uses for for that data, but it, it'll at least keep track of it. Oh, that's weird. It just keeps going up. That's funny. Yeah, no, I, I uh, at least my microchip, my microchip actually is really good at keeping some, some of the reservations. I need to, uh, I need to reserve my, um, my laptop. I just realized I need to reserve my laptop today. Uh, I haven't really had a need to do it yet, but I have a, I have a little, um, controller app for, uh, OBS. It's the iPad died. Uh, but I, I pulled it up and the, the IP address that it was in there for, for, for last time is, is no longer my reservation. I'll definitely have to, uh, force one for my laptop. Uh, oh, I'm going to have to force one for my laptop, uh, on Wi-Fi and on, uh, Ethernet. So how that goes. Uh, I think that's it, y'all. I, I really wanted to do Frigate today, but. That's, uh, I got to do YAML configuration and, uh, oh, right. I was going to do a Patreon. Re Let's do that. Can I get anything, anything other than, okay, but you're stuck there. You're stuck on that old, that old screen. Uh, and you can no, no longer see what I'm doing. That's so weird. It's like they, they. OBS made changes we agree with. Yeah, it's being a complete fucking ass on, on my end for. So here's what we're going to do. Um, let's do a face overhead real quick. So I'm going to pull up my Patreon real quick and thank my patrons. Because I have, I have Casket Sparkle. Literally just the emojis for Caskets and Sparkle. I have Dylan Box, Dana, Mirbella. And Marley, I want to thank all of you. I believe I have uh, an old Patreon for Void Box Industries, uh, in which my sister Liz is still a contributor of five dollars over there as well. So um, I'm working on doing uh, custom content for Patreon. Uh, in fact, uh, this last VOD went up early, like the edited VOD went up early for my patrons um and i've been kind of doing some write-ups some early conceptual write-ups for projects that i want to do and like what i want to see from the projects uh i haven't uploaded it yet but i'm i wrote up a thing that talks about like the engineering that i have in my head for um for redoing the hatch in my bus uh so Last summer, not this summer, but 2021 summer, uh, I completely removed the entire hatch and resealed it. There's a there's a threshold, and then there's the hatch. So it's kind of two pieces, but like they're they're one at the moment. But the hatch is fucked up, and it's still leaky with a new seal and everything. <laughs> uh, excuse me. 
yeah, I put a new foam seal on it, but their major problem is like, there's like a vent that, that was there before that's all fucked up. I think the pre previous old owner probably hit something uh, that was too just a bit too low and or like a branch fell out. And so it's super messed up. And uh, I've kind of been thinking over the years on what I'd what I'd like to replace it with and make 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 some sort of improvement. Uh, and I kind of wrote some stuff like wrote a, a big basically a blog post about what I what I wanted and how I want to rebuild it because it because it 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 describes some very interesting engineering um and one of the things that i i think the only thing that i'll really mention right now is that i want to do like a a smoked acrylic in fact i'm looking at like plexiglass actually um so uh impact resistant uh and like kind of like a smoke tinted color so kind of like you know protects from from the because it'll end up being a skylight after that and then i can always put a shade over it um but i'm also thinking about like the the mechanism for it to open and close and 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 that's what's really interesting and i wanted to put maybe something like those up on my patreon page as uh member only uh things and and that starts at one dollar that always that will always start at just like a dollar a month um to join to join the patreon and uh the more the merrier but uh again i am technically homeless <laughs> and i live in a bus i have some nice gadgets to 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 been very very fortunate so far uh in in the support that i have but uh it i need to work now and that's why uh i'm doing these live streams on a regular basis to share all the projects that I've been doing over the past several years and the things that I've learned from them. Uh, I tried shooting stuff when I started doing it, but then I got, you know, I realized I didn't know enough, right? But I've always been aspirational to be an educator because uh, uh, as an artist at heart, uh, I thought I always had like interesting ideas that, that might be uh, interesting for other people too. So uh and I do things a little weird, so uh, I hope you enjoy all that and uh, kind of help me get through this stuff. Uh, I am definitely planning on selling uh, some of the stuff that I make, even though I plan on open sourcing all of it. Uh, if you've been following me for any length of time, uh, you you remember my, my business card holders made out of concrete, and unfortunately I don't have the facilities to do the concrete work anymore but people really love those business card holders uh and i fortunately don't have any more uh but uh i was able to sell a lot of them but my designs are always open source so uh that one was even certified by the open source hardware foundation and um i have like a I, i'm in the database and everything it's certified open source uh, and you can make one yourself if you want to. Uh, all of the designs are on, on GitHub under Voidbox Industries. Uh, I'm going to try to make that stuff a little bit more accessible and, and visible. Uh, but I, I, you can always go to vdbx.io to see that stuff. And of course, uh, my the, you know links will be f for stuff in the description and whatnot. But um, if anything, it would be super beneficial for you to like and subscribe. Uh, tells YouTube and uh, Twitch that you like what, what you're seeing here. Uh, and I think I don't even know how Twitch works in terms of like subs and stuff, but like I, I don't really expect to do much in terms of uh, revenue from like Twitch or YouTube in that regard. Uh, but it would be nice to, to hit, you know, 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 uh, watch hours. Uh, the numbers are going up, which is really um, promising to be doing this on like a regular schedule and having each one be increasingly better numbers. So uh, it, it means a lot. If you're watching this on YouTube, definitely please like, like and subscribe and share it and uh, do whatever do whatever you can because uh, I am I am very much a starving. Uh, I appreciate every single one of you for joining me. I will see you in a couple weeks. Bye, friends.